Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I'm very proud to present to you a top menu overview of RPG developer Bakin. RPG developer Bakin, or Bakin as I will now refer to it, is Smileboom's follow up to Smile Game Builder RPG Edition, and some call it SGB2. When you very first open RPG developer Bakin, or Bakin, you are presented with a splash screen that tells you that development will be easier if you open a sample project if you have not used a tool of this type before. And if you have used a tool of this type before, that you can immediately get started making your game. Now Bakin has a lot of features to go over, and what we're looking at now is the introduction to a new game wizard. Before we dive into the wizard, I'm going to go over the other options in the left side menu. This is the top menu and you'll see this screen every single time you open Bakin. First we have the new creation wizard, suitably the topmost option, followed by history. Anything that you've made the last few times you've opened Bakin will appear here, as well as any other projects you've opened. After that, we have your local PC, and by the way, these can be resized to your preference. A note on the display and UI, I currently have my display settings at 1920 by 1080p resolution. If you use a higher resolution, this user interface and everything herein will be a bit smaller. The local PC menu selection defaults by showing you the contents of the templates folder in the Bakin folder, which is in your Steam Apps common folder. For those of you familiar with Smile Game Builder, we did a lot of work in the common folder of Steam Apps to do things with Smile Game Builder as well, as this is where all of your template project files, DLCs, and the like are stored. Next we have Game Gallery, and this is very similar to the new game selection bar in Smile Game Builder here, in that it is from here you can select a project file from which to build your new game. Now your setup may look different, this is a bit of an earlier version of Bakin, but we have Ancient Pack, Basic Set, Effects Pack Volume 1, Map Collection, the Low Poly Pack, which actually uses the low-res polygonal materials from Smile Game Builder, a sample game called Orb Stories, Sound DLC, a 3D tutorial, and the Western Pack. Next, we have an option to look at the Steam Workshop. That's right, Bakin will be compatible with the Steam Workshop, and we'll be able to share our resources and our projects over the workshop. Next is the Assets Showcase selection. At the time of this video, it's unclear quite what this does, although I feel like this is probably going to be related to the DLC in some way. Next is Info and Tips, and here we have links to the official YouTube channel of Smile Game Builder, as well as the official website for RPG developer Bakin. As of the time of this video, it's not quite ready. Next we have the Configuration tab, and this tab is very similar to Smile Game Builder's configuration menu here. The options here are very similar, except now we have options for an auto backup. No more lost project files because you forgot to hit save or your PC crashed in the middle of developing. You can use an auto backup and you can set the backup trigger to when editing map has changed, when each edit dialog has been closed, or every set amount of time. You can also change the font style for the tool, as well, of course, as the in-game font style. Unfortunately, this does seem to imply that your projects will still only be able to support one font. Next, we have the multiple launch of Bakin option, and this allows us to literally open a second copy of Bakin, something that we could not do with Smile Game Builder. I don't need that, so I'm just going to close it. The bottom option is exit tool, and we don't want to do that, so now we get to jump into the new creation wizard, RPG Developer Bakin, helping to create a new game. Welcome to RPG Developer Bakin. Use this tool to create your own game. By answering the guide's questions, you can prepare a template for the game you want to make. Let's try it out right away. If you want to skip this process and essentially just jump right into creating a new game, then from New Creation Wizard, you'll simply hit this button in the bottom right corner, try to start editing right away. Once we do that, we'll be taken to the editor. But for now, I'm going to hit Next. So the next page is Project Basics. And do you have an idea of what kind of game you want to make? You can enter up to 18 letters each. Now, this is doing nothing more than allowing you to set the game's title as well as subtitle and creator credit. So we can change some of the information here now. And now I will hit Next. By the way, you can also change the working path. I'll just keep mine default. This is where your project file is going to be saved 
on your PC. By default, that's your documents folder in a subfolder called Smileboom and another subfolder called Bagin. Let's hit next. Now, since this is a bit of an earlier version, a lot of the UI that you might see in this video still be in Japanese, but essentially this is asking whether we would like to start with a normal project or a simple project, and the difference is what kind of assets are included. The simple project will have only the bare bones minimum amount of assets for Bakin to work properly. You will add all of the rest of the assets you need yourself. Obviously this would be a much smaller file size, it would load up a lot quicker. I would actually recommend choosing simple if you already know what it is you're doing. Otherwise, I would select normal, and normal will include a lot more assets. It'll include 2D characters, buildings for your maps, sound data. Currently the estimates as to the file size are not available in this build. I've chose normal, now I will go to the next page. Now from here you can choose the name and appearance of the main cast, in other words the player character. But of course anything that you set here in the opening screens of the wizard can absolutely be changed later. We have two boxes in which we can double click to set assets, one for moving, one for layout, and we can change the main cast name which is default set to hero so we'll double click on one and an asset picker opens up we are in the resource folder and we can select the 3d stamps and 2d stamps subfolder we can see all of the assets that are going to come with our project by default we have a folder called reserved and when we look in this folder we have water sky 2d monsters dot casts and four events dot casts actually refers to the dot or pixel style casts or actors or player characters. Now I'm not sure, but I think that these could represent the moving sprites for the map. So I will select hero A and then click add and exit. And now on the right side for layout, I'll double click and we are dropped into a different folder by default, the images and textures folder. So from here, I'll click reserved again and 2D casts. And this time I'll go into the folder marked hero A and I'll choose the face icon for hero A. And I'll just name my character and then hit next. Now, if this is not how these are supposed to be used, we will find out pretty quickly when we start the game. Okay, the camera settings screen is one of the most useful screens I've ever seen in a tool of this type. So many times users are asking questions like, can we do third person camera? Can we do first person? Can we do a 2D? Can we do a side scroller? I've seen this question asked again and again in every engine that I've used in the communities surrounding every engine. And while I know that we can change this option later, this just makes it super easy to set up your game with the desired correct camera. So we can choose a first person view a player rear view, a player central view, which is a pretty default JRPG style view, or horizontal view from side, which will facilitate making a sort of Paper Mario or side scroller type game. For now, let's go traditional and click player central view and then hit next. This is going to be exciting for some of the users. The operation method can be selected here. We can actually choose the regular movement for our player character referred to here as the XZ type, left, right, and depth, or tank controls. Left, right is rotation, and up and down moves your character forward and backward. The XY type is left, right, and elevation, or side view operation, and this will facilitate a 2D side-scrolling platform type of game. We're gonna leave this as the default setting, keep things nice and classic, and click next. All right, and we immediately see that the jumping that was teased with SGB has definitely been implemented here. We can choose to have action settings with jump and with inertial movement. And you can also choose not to have these and keep things default. Inertial movement means when you are moving and you take your fingers off of the joypad and the character is no longer receiving input to move, they won't just stop and freeze in place. They'll actually slow to a stop. Let's go ahead and select both and break free of tradition and then click next. And now we can click the start editing your game button. We can also test play from here or start over again. Let's go ahead and test play and see what we've made. The very first time you test play or make a new game, it may take a little bit longer because it has a lot of assets that it needs to copy and make into your project folder. But here is our official very first SGB2 or Bakken game title screen. So if I click new game, we're actually given a little bit of debug code. Looks like we get 
a name for the map that fades in by default. And we still have Q and E for camera rotation, as well as up, down, left, right for character movement. It looks to be a free movement. We can press X to jump. We actually jump quite high. That may be a setting that can be changed. And we could step off of these ledges, or at least the shorter ones. So it looks like we have better than just the block height. We can now do varying heights when we are making our maps and we can have our character walk up these varying heights without having to use slopes all the time. We can still rotate the camera's X and Y axes and we are still allowed to zoom in and out <sighs> to an extreme. Awesome. I absolutely love that so far. We still have a dedicated button for camera reset. This time it is the P key. M opens the menu. We have a lot more default options this time around. And it looks like if we jump, we're allowed to traverse tiles that are too high for us to walk over. We can jump down and up tiles, but not off the edge of the map, of course. Now this is just the sample map that was created for us with the settings that we specified by going through the wizard. Let's take a quick look at all of the options in the menu. We have items, equipment, member, map, that is very interesting. It's unclear to me whether this map is generated from the map that our character is in, or if it happens to be an image provided. We have configure, of course, skills, status, picture book, save, and exit. All right, we'll actually exit the game and see what effect having this new project has on our top menu. None. That's probably because it hasn't been saved yet. Uh, we'll click start editing your game and from here kind of get a real time on how fast it is to open the game for the first time. And awesome, we're about to look at the map editor. Well, that's it for the introduction to the top menu. In the next episode, we will be going over every detail in the map editor. So stay tuned for that one. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.